is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. And now for something a little bit different because we don't generally cover monitors, but some of you know that I like to do photo editing and I like to do digital art. So what we have here is what's called a pen display. This is the UG, UG 2150, UG, UG, yeah. UG EE is the company name, it's a Chinese company and the model is UG-2150. And this is a 22 inch pen display competes at a much, much lower price point with the Wacom Cintiq 22 HD. Uh-huh. So the Wacoms are traditionally very expensive products. This is on Amazon for like 609 bucks, which is actually incredibly cheap for something that is both a pen digitizer and a full HD monitor. And we got this one from Gearbest and they're selling it for a little over 400 bucks, which is like, wow, it's insane. So if you want to do art on the cheap and on the large, this could be for you. We're going to look at it now. So there are several of these on the market, all from different Chinese companies. There's the Huion GT220, the XP Pen makes one, there's Yanova, and this one is the Uji. Now, I kind of like their drivers pretty well, I have to say, as these drivers go. And by the way, if you thought that Wacom drivers were a little annoying and, and quacky, you know, these can get even a little bit hairier, but I'll talk about that. All in all, if you're a little patient and technical, it's not so bad. Let's talk about the overall design. It's black. This is the only color that's good to me. It looks nice. The display is obviously a glossy display. It's not ultimately very glary though. 1920 by 1080 full HD. So if you're hoping for QHD or 4K, <laughs> you're just not going to get it at this price range. And in fact, Wacom stops at QHD resolution right now with the 27 QHD non-touch screen. There's no touch option here. So the, the good news is you don't have to worry about palm rejection. The bad news is, is because it's a glossy display, it's going to show your hand oils a lot and pick it up. So uh, some of these monitors ship with a an art glove. This is one that I have actually just <laughs> taken a glove and chopped the fingers off myself. And that's what I use. In fact, I use this even with touch screens too, because it just avoids accidental palm touches. You can rest your hand very comfortably that way. Controls are on the bottom like a normal monitor and the stand. Yes, it comes with the stand. This is not like Wacom where you don't get the stand and it's built in and it's pretty, pretty functional and pretty darn clever and also more importantly, pretty sturdy. The stand on this is actually pretty well made, built in, included. You don't have to pay extra for it. You could unscrew it, remove it if you want to do a visa mount kind of thing instead. So you've got this the rubber feet here. Nice. These are metal, so it's pretty strong. And then if you do something like release this lever, you've got infinite adjustments and you can hear the sprawling of the mechanism. So any place you want to rest it going all the way down to about collapsing it that far, at which point the cables get to be a nuisance and a little bit of a problem. We'll talk about that. You can go pretty far down. Now I think most people want it kind of upright unless you're hunching over it, which isn't very good for you ergonomically. You're going to probably be using it at some angle like this. At least I usually do. So that's the good part. The ports are on the back facing on the bottom and you can see those. The, the nice thing is there's a good selection of ports. Now you're going to have to use the USB type A port and one of the display outs to connect to your laptop or desktop computer. In this case, I have it connected to the HP Spectre X360 15 inch, the latest edition, which also has pen support and a 4K display and a better quality display than the Uji display. So you, you'll notice the difference in the color and the contrast there. But you have your choice of DVI, which is nice. That cable is not included in the box, but HDMI and VGA cables are included. So I'm using HDMI here. If you have a laptop that only has USB-C or DisplayPort, you can just get a USB-C or DisplayPort to HDMI adapter dongle. That's not a big deal. So you just plug it in, boom. There are no speakers here. There's no audio lines. There's no sound over HDMI going on with this. You get two pens in the box. They are identical. They look a lot like a Wacom Cintiq pen. Rubbery soft touch coating, two buttons on here, no eraser on the end. And a pretty, to me, it's a pretty good size nib. It's not too skinny, it's not too fat. Again, it's a rechargeable pen, so they claim 120 hours of use time after you charge up the pen. Both of our pens arrived dead as a doornail, so they both had to be charged, and I've been using it for two weeks and I haven't had to charge it again. So I know somebody I noticed on Amazon thought you had to use this connected via this cable at all times, charging cable. No, you don't. You just use this to charge it up. It doesn't take too, too long, but you also get two of these cables. So it's USB charging, and then it has a little barrel pin connector on the other end right here. Plugs into the butt of the pen when you charge it up. 
Also in the box is the pen stand right here. Now, if you've used Wacom again, this looks familiar too. The Cintiqs often come with a stand that looks almost exactly like that. And just like the Cintiqs, if you unscrew it, that uh, comes with eight spare nibs. Now, these are identical looking nibs. From what I can tell, they all have the same point on them. There's no difference. And there's a nib puller tool in the center of it. So for the price, that's pretty nice. I know some people have said they got a screen protector bundle. Ours did not have that inside. It didn't come with the glove, but I don't know. That, that's not that important. I wouldn't worry about the screen protector too much because this is not a sharp nib. This is glass right here. It's a little noisy. It's a little squeaky sometimes. The only time I could see really wanting a screen protector is if you want something to make it more matte. So let's talk about display quality because this is, after all, a monitor. And for those of you who uh, are not so interested in doing digital painting and drawing but want to use this, say, for photo editing, this part will be important. And I suspect this will not be the pen display for you. Brightness is fine at 250 nits. For those of you who aren't aware, our monitors typically don't get as bright as higher-end laptops because you take laptops outside and everywhere, your monitor stays indoors. So that's absolutely fine, 250 nits. In fact, that's ever so slightly brighter than the, the Cintiq 22 HD, which was 230 nits. Color gamut's also fine, too. It's comparable to a, you know, a $1,000 Ultrabook or laptop like our HP Spectre X360 that we have there, 4K screen. 95% of sRGB, 75% of Adobe RGB, though the colors don't look as saturated and poppy as the HP do that. You can see that just from looking at them right there. It's nothing to do with the difference in resolution. That's a 4K display on the HP. That can make things look sharper and improve the sense of contrast a bit, but it's not going to help make those colors pop. It's just a better display on the HP which is fair. It's a smaller panel on a more expensive product overall. Gamma is a little weird at 1.4. 2.2 would be ideal. And I'll show you the, the on-screen settings, you know, the typical ones where you hit the menu button on the monitor. And for gamma, instead of having, you know, 2.0, 2.2 as choices, this should be a numerical value. It has either on or off. Say what? What does that mean? When it comes to color temperature, it does have a variety of normal presets, although most of them are higher than professionals would be using for color temperatures. I mean, you're, you're really not going to want to go into the 10,000 Kelvin range, most likely. But you do have sRGB, which is 6,600 Kelvin, which is just about right. So that's pretty good. What isn't so good here is contrast. And now this has a high contrast mode, and I've enabled that because it looks so sad out of the box. It looks so washed out and milky. And the high contrast mode really helped things without damaging color balance or anything else. So that's what we're running right here. Now, you know, Uji's website doesn't have a, any, any information about the contrast levels. I've seen some e-commerce listing sites and they say a thousand to one. It is not. We measured 160 to one because black levels are pretty poor at 1.37. I'm not seeing any light bleed on this IPS display, but it's just doesn't have good black levels. So that's why I say if you're editing photographs, particularly where dynamic ranges of interest, you, you probably don't want to be using this unless you have another monitor to use for the actual proofing and you're only using this to do your corrections, to make selections, to delete photobomb items and stuff like that because yeah, that's what it is. Now in painting and drawing, if you're doing line art, if you're doing comics, it's probably absolutely okay. I like to do some landscapes. You can see one on screen right here right now where uh, the, the vagueness of the black levels can be a bit of a problem, so I use the Spectre's display to proof what I'm doing, and I bounce it back and forth to make sure that I'm getting what I want in my dark tones. And in some cases, it almost looks like a, a color shift because the contrast is messing with me. So I'm using a kind of gray-green marker here on my little hybrid penguin puffin cartoon friend that I created. I don't even know what it is, and I drew it. And it looks kind of purpley at first, and then it shifts over to green as you, if you increase the opacity, which you do using pen pressure. This has 2,048 levels of pressure sensitivity, which is quite good. And again, it competes with the Wacom Cintiq products that are out right now. And the pen pressure curves are good, and you've got actually a control panel that we'll show you in a minute where you can adjust those things. So you can control your opacity if you're using you got your brush set up that way. You can control your line width. There's no tilt, there's no rotate at this price point. Gee, I don't expect it either. When drawing slow diagonal lines, there is really very little jitter here. This is not like an Entrig experience or Wacom AES. It's right up there with Wacom EMR. It's quite good. 
In terms of parallax, it doesn't have what you see with Wacom EMR digitizers insofar as the corners are off. Uh, they're not. You'll see me accessing the menus here when I'm using Photoshop, and, and they're right on spot. There's, there's no offset in the corners, but there is a pen to tip on screen offset because of the thickness of the glass over the digitizer. And it's enough. I really, really hate parallax or the sense of parallax, but it, I can live with it, certainly, because this is a very affordable product and it allows me to draw big, which is something I love. It's not horrible, but there is a little bit. This is not like using an iPad Pro or a Wacom Mobile Studio Pro when it comes to, you know, there being a sense of no pen tip offset from where you're actually drawing. Overall, as a way to, as a hobbyist who likes to draw and paint digitally, this is a great way to do it on the cheap. Again, if you're doing it professionally and you're doing, say, matte painting or concept art professionally, you're probably still going to have to go with something higher end like the Wacom Cintiq just to get that better contrast and even better, therefore, sense of color accuracy when you're working in the dark tones. So here are the OSD menus or on-screen menus. You press the menu button, so you've got picture, brightness, contrast, so on, setup, language. DCR is a dynamic contrast that I was telling you about. Timeout's very slow. So let's go to gamma and select that. See what I mean? Gamma on, gamma off. Hmm, I don't know what that is. But other than that, it's pretty much your standard stuff. Now let's take a look at the UG control panel. But first, here's the trick. Now I'm actually using it as an extended display. You don't have to set it up mirrored, which is nice. If your main or your second monitor, in this case the laptop display, is of a different resolution, it can get a little strange. At first I can only get it working in mirrored mode, but I eventually got it working in uh, extended display mode. By the way, go to ug.net and download the drivers. You get a driver CD in the box, you never know if those are up to date, so download their latest drivers there. And then installed it and the pen control panel actually didn't do anything. It would launch, but it wouldn't do anything. So I discovered I had to set the Spectre's display resolution to 1080p temporarily, and then it worked just fine. So I did that. I set the settings that I needed for the monitor, pen monitor, and then I set my HP back to 4K, and everything works actually just fine after that. So that's my solution. Just set it back to 4K afterwards so you don't have to run it at 1080p. So the only software that's installed is an app called Tablet Setting 32-bit. There it is right there. So I'll show you what options we have inside. And Supports Digital Ink is checked by default. I assume that they mean Windows 10 support and Windows 8 support for Digital Ink. I left that on. And we've got Monitor Settings. So you've got your monitor placement right here, which is actually backwards because I've just changed the setting. We have what the buttons do. So you've got Pan or Eraser Toggle for button one. You've got Middle Click, Double Click, Right Click, options like that. That's nice. Double click speed for the pen. Pressure sensitivity and I have it set to light because I do have a light touch. Now this has a pretty good force of initial activation and this is a UC Logic digitizer which is a pretty good digitizer honestly. We seem to only see this in Chinese products but it's, it's, it's good stuff so I'm barely resting the pen there. So there's that and then you've got calibration and you can do four point or nine point now it says rotation, no rotation. Notice that right there. There's no way using this with the stand that you can really use this in portrait mode. I suppose if you used a visa mount, you could. Now in terms of application support, I mean, things are looking up in general because we have Windows, Windows Ink APIs for Windows 10. And most programs these days support it, so I haven't had any problems using this in Sketchbook Pro, in Photoshop, in Illustrator, in ArtRage, in Corel Painter 2017. I haven't run into a program yet, Clip Studio Paint, that hasn't worked nicely. And most of what you see me dem demoing on screen is going to be with Photoshop, just because that's my preferred place to paint and draw. But it works really fine in all of them, which is a nice experience. So that's the UG2150. UG? UG? Who knows? Anyway, for the price, for around $410 or so, I mean yes. If you're a professional, I mean no. But if you're anybody else, then definitely this lets you do something that usually only the pros do get to do, and it does it pretty reliably with pretty good pen tracking. Contrast is pretty sucktastic, but other than that, it's not bad. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, and thumbs up if you like this vid.